This is Performers Wanted. All righty, Eric, how are we doing? Doing pretty well. How about yourself? Doing pretty good. Uh, as we can see, we didn't take too much time away from the Wizarding World. We've already come back. It's already been just a few weeks, and we've already come back. We were chatting with Albus himself, Joel Myers. Now we actually have Scorpius today. Eric Christopher Peterson, how are you doing? We're doing great. I'm doing great. The Wizarding World is doing great. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it's, it's 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 interesting. Of course, of course, I'm just excited again because we're back to the Cursed Child. And with our last episode, we've seen that I have read the Cursed Child on multiple occasions. Haven't got a chance to actually see the show myself, but um, this is the closest thing I'm going to get to it for right now until it comes to Los Angeles. So soon, soon. <laughs> So, uh, so for people who don't know who you are, for whatever reason, I'm pretty certain people know who you are who's listening. But go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> um, well, my name is Eric Christopher Peterson, um, and I am an actor. I currently play Scorpius Malfoy in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway. So when you see the production in LA with the tour, I I I won't be there. Um, mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a young actor. I'm early in my career. I have uh, done a couple of other professional shows, but nothing else on Broadway. So it's my Broadway debut. And mm-hmm. I'm a big baseball fan. <laughs> that's that's big me. Big baseball fan. <laughs> Who's your team? I, I'm a, a Rockies fan. I grew up in Colorado. Rockies fan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Chicago got myself, White Sox fan. Okay, um, my my dad grew up in Rockford, so he grew up a White Sox fan. My grandfather's a White Sox fan, so that's uh, kind of my number yeah. two team. <laughs> number two team, yeah, honorary yeah. number two team, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, it's my team and my dad's team. My dad, my dad is pretty much anyone Chicago sports, but mostly White Sox for for him. And then, um, since you know we're all from Chicago, and my mom's like Cubs, <laughs> so it's just like. <laughs> This on we're like battle, but my dad will root for the Cubs if they're doing if they're doing well. Um, but yeah, imagine we just talk about baseball the entire time. We just like skip that would be a blast. <laughs> <laughs> we skip over everything. Okay, number three picks. Let's go. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so let's just get into it because this is your uh, Broadway debut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Broadway debut. Uh, and it's similar to, to Joel, who is your, your counterpart in this show, but I've got an inkling and also, you know, just like a little, a little inside baseball that, you know, the stories are very different. They can, you know, they converge at a certain point, but that you started different. So, uh, as far as like musical theater and, and performing in theater in general and acting, like when did it start for you? Yeah, well, my my dad, who grew up a White Sox fan that I mentioned, is a high school theater teacher. And so I really just, I grew up, um, you know, after school, I'd go sit and watch his rehearsals. And um, pretty much as early as they let me, I was I was trying to take some theater classes and um, Mm -hmm. And get on stage myself because I I just looked up to his students and and what they were doing so much and I thought it was so incredible and special to to live in like a realized imagination in that way. Um, mm-hmm. So I fell in love with it from a very early age. I don't know if you could even say I fell in love with it as much as I was just born in love with it. Um, mm-hmm. But then in middle school. A uh, different high school, not the one my dad teaches at, was doing a production of Ragtime, the musical Ragtime, and right. uh, they needed someone to play the little boy in that musical. And so I auditioned, and they cast me to play the little boy. And doing that experience, um, we we and we like took that musical to the state thespian festival. It was um was sort of a really special production. And it seemed to garner some attention from the community uh, in a way that was outside of just the high school. And 
you know, I was only in seventh grade and I sort of recognized how special this was and like, oh, this is a, this is a show that's affecting people and it's, it's bringing this community together. People are really showing up to see this and it seems mm -hmm. like something more than just imagination fun time. And, right. um, from that point, it was kind of like, um, it was all I wanted to do. Uh, mm. and, and, um, Shortly after that, I, I had my first. I, I had my first professional job, my first paycheck for acting, and mm -hmm. um, and then I studied acting in college, and the we were off to the races. Now here we go. I hope right. I just get to keep doing it as long as I possibly can. I am. I am certain that you will. Uh, what was your uh, your first uh, professional acting gig? What, what was that? <laughs> um, that job i just mentioned that i i it was a short film that i shot in second grade or not second grade mm -hmm. seventh grade called mm -hmm. um bentley's big production bentley's big day something mm -hmm. to that effect and it was about this um like youth film director named bentley brockford who i played who mm -hmm. was had been assigned to make um a class project and it, it was mm -hmm. effectively pointed at teaching children about different types of touch like what is unsafe touch versus safe touch and mm -hmm. i think kind of geared towards teaching children uh, about you know boundaries around who's allowed to touch them and who's not and mm -hmm. then my first professional acting job for the stage was uh, the summer after i graduated high school i was in a production of spam a lot mm, nice 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 was this a uh... This was local theater, or was this like a like a professional theater company nearby, or did you have to travel for it? Like, what was? Yeah, it was a small. So I grew up uh, just outside of Denver, and then this was a small regional theater up in the mountains. So we rehearsed in the Denver area, and then once the run started, we all moved up the mountains and lived uh, up in the mountains and worked at this theater for a summer, which was like the best way I could have spent my summer mm -hmm. after after graduating high school is just hiking and doing a silly comedy. Right, right, right. Yeah. And Spam a lot's great. So oh, it's so like I, you... I also did Spam a lot in high school. It's like the most fun show. I would do it seven more times. <laughs> and I'm not a big musical <laughs> theater guy, but I would do Spam a lot over and over again. You've just manifested it. Whenever you <laughs> whenever you're done with the cursed <laughs> child, you're gonna be right back on Spam a lot. Um, Sign me up. National tour. Um so you're in ragtime, you're in a short, in which you get paid for, which isn't often, um, depending on the short, you know, it's not often at all, but, you know, they had the budget to do so, and uh, you get to be in spam a lot, and actually get paychecks for it. Um, and then, so this is, this is the summer after high school, so then you're jumping into college, um were you in like a conservatory afterwards like yeah that? yeah i went to the webster conservatory um in st louis wasn't that now it's called the peter Sargent conservatory at webster mm -hmm. university um mm -hmm. and that's where i studied for four years uh, mm -hmm. for, for my acting degree nice, nice nice what was that experience like well it was through the pandemic which sort of sort of shaped things so i i learned mm -hmm. uh I learned like Ibsen and Chekhov in the same medium we're talking in right now, pretty much. Um, right. <laughs> but it was, it was a beautiful experience, you know, pandemic considered. And like, I met some of the, the best friends in my life there and people mm -hmm. that I continue to collaborate with now in New York. Um, mm -hmm. And it was an intensive experience. It was what I wanted coming out of high school. I, I wanted to go to a, a really focused acting mm -hmm. program. And I, I think I got that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. The four-year program, you spent four years in there? Four years, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, and your graduation year was 2020, 2021? 2022. 2022. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's just like, so definitely like in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of like your college career was the good old pandemic it pops yeah. up a lot in this podcast because it's just like yeah it's a performer's podcast so if it affected anybody oh um, yeah so deeply right right so i guess you know i guess i'm gonna just ask you know um 
for you as a performer and a performer's medium in college it's it's really you know really focused like how did projects work for you how did like um if there was any like final scenes or anything like that because i know a lot of people you know done like oh i had to do my final scene you know or anything like that you know like on so, zoom or or just yeah, in general in just in general yeah yeah um i mean it was uh, sometimes i think back on my college experience and i wonder how i like survived at all because i was doing so much that i don't know when i had time to sleep um mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but but yeah i did a number of fantastic shows that I was very proud of the work on. And I also was on build crews and run crews for other shows. And mm -hmm. there also was, a, there's a project that they do at Webster called uh, every Tuesdays. And it's every Tuesday, a group of students presents to the entire conservatory, some mm -hmm. selection from a play or some original piece. And it's sort of the, the, body of student driven work uh, it's just mm -hmm. students working on these pieces on mm -hmm. stage direction technical um and so then I, I also was a part of a number of those on top mm -hmm. of my you know class projects and stuff and and th those sorts of projects were where i think i i started to and i hope to continue to really learn um you know what it is to collaborate and what it is to generate something from nothing um, you know, outside of showing up on the first day and you have a script and you have a director with a vision, but but rather just showing up in a room with uh, some people that you like and trying to create something. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful for that experience. No, oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so like, well, I graduated a while ago, but I was I was working um, at a film school during the the pandemic. Um, and uh, it was a, a very interesting thing to kind of like switch from like physically being on set to like all, basically all theory. <laughs> it was yeah, basically yeah. all theory after that. Um, and uh, and you know from Zoom basically, just or, you know, and people were like doing write ups or, or anything like that. So you know, definitely commend you for going to uh, a focused uh, artistic school during that time because it's just like how like what and don't get me wrong, like theory is actually fun. Theory's fun, you know, uh conceptualizing is fun. And just being able to study the craft is pretty off. Like, the um, pandemic changed the way we operate in the world, I think, to an extent. And yeah. you know, I give credit to one of my professors who was teaching my auditions class at the mm -hmm. time we were in the middle of it when the pandemic hit and we had to pivot to online and he just he kind of threw the syllabus out the window and pivoted to teaching a self-taping class and mm. and it, he embraced that in such a way because he was he was you know he is an actor as well as a professor and and without the sort of fundamentals we learned in that class i don't know if my self-tape for harry potter is good enough to get mm -hmm. me the in-person callback, um, right? You know, so it's it is like to that point, like focusing on the theory, focusing on what you are able to focus on, and sort of claiming the moment is a mm -hmm. really valuable thing. Yeah, definitely, and you know, it definitely did change everything because I mean, self typing was an important thing to do, but you know, it was often like, you know, uh, if, if you had representation, you know, it would be like on the fly, and you like, can you send the self tape in, send the self tape in. But then they'd also send you out. Um, now you look online, or you know, representation is is basically telling you to self tape all the time before mm -hmm. anything. It's all it's all self tape. It's all self tape, um, which I mean is is awesome to a certain extent. But you're also in there, to sort of like watching the tape you did. You're just like maybe I can do this one more time. You know exactly. It's you know, a process. Just, yeah, you have to like you have to figure out how to make it work for you. It's exactly. a, it's, yeah. Yeah. Within the space you have, you know, it just, it's, it is definitely a process. Speaking of which, 15 minutes in, we're already here. Um, so, Harry Potter. <laughs> so, Harry Potter, um, I guess, you know, just to kind of keep the, you know, the volumes alive, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll talk about like how you came across this because you know and, I, and even before that i'll ask you just like 
you know, making the transition um, over into to New York was, you know, was that thing beforehand? Do you self tape uh, at home? Like, but how did you find out that they were even looking for something like this? Because the show's ongoing. It's an right. ongoing show. It's touring. It's in different countries, and you know, obviously, mainstay in Broadway. So it's like, how do you like like find this out for you? How how did you find that out? Yeah. Well, I mean, I grew up a Harry Potter fan, and I heard about the show as soon as it was as it was announced, and I knew Draco's son was a character in this show, and mm-hmm. so from however old I was when it was the first press release announcing the show, I was maybe fourteen or fifteen, and I I had Scorpius on my radar um, mm-hmm. as I've got to audition for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, kind of more practically, in in actuality, I had just graduated college. And I was doing a production of Othello in rep with a production of The Importance of Being Earnest at the Flagstaff Shakespeare Festival mm-hmm. in Arizona. And um, this audition went out for Albus. Um, mm-hmm. They were auditioning for Albus and for Rose. And mm-hmm. so I, I taped for Albus Potter. Um, mm-hmm. And... I guess it was a good enough tape that they asked me to come out to New York a week or two later to do a movement yeah. call. And I did that. And um, then all of a sudden they were asking me to come back and audition for Scorpius. Mm. And then I went back and auditioned for Albus. And then I auditioned for Scorpius. And I was auditioning <laughs> for the ensemble. And I, I auditioned for just about every character in the play I think I possibly could have played mm-hmm. with my you know mm-hmm. instrument. And uh, kind of kept hoping they'd call me back in for Scorpius again, mm-hmm. wanting to go back in for Scorpius. <laughs> and as I said, he'd, he'd been on my radar as a character. I mean, with my, my hair is, is kind of this dirty blonde now, but as a boy, it was, was Malfoy Platinum. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so then I ended up in the final callbacks for Scorpius and sort of thought this is the most crazy experience I've ever had. And right. they asked me if I wanted to play the role. And I was like, are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> this is like, I've been trying to tell you guys this the whole entire time. Keep bringing me in for every other characters, you know, like, yeah. like, look at me, look at me, you know, but um, that is, that is interesting. So it's, you know, you're, you're taping, like you see this opportunity, you're like, you're taping, like, okay, I'm going to tape for all of this. And then, um, you know, I want to be Scorpius, but whatever. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll, I'll take for all of this and then you know they're just like you know what they're almost manifesting it's like we see that we we, we see that we'll we'll bring you in for that but you know what we do actually want to see you for all this one more time so come on like one it's really time. just it's like a it's definitely like a, a slingshot um well and the most so, the most the most hard-working wonderful and important people in the building at the Lyric mm-hmm. Theater are the are the covers who cover those roles and mm-hmm. um, that is a whole different uh, that is a whole different set of skills that I don't mm-hmm. know how they do it but I was auditioning to potentially be a cover for Albus or a cover for Scorpius as well and and right. um, yeah mad respect for all the swings and covers nice nice so you weren't even in New York yet when you auditioned no, no I wasn't I was I was planning to move to New York soon after my contract in Arizona ended. And then as that contract wrapped up, um, I was spending so much money on flying to New York to audition for Harry Potter that I was like, I need to just move now. Yeah. And so I, I went, I went, I came, came out here, New York. Nice. Nice. New York. Yeah. If you make it here, you make it anywhere. Um, when did you meet Joel? Joel and I, uh, well, I got uh, I got an email from our associate director uh, maybe a week before rehearsal started, and Joel was CC'd on it. And I was like, mm-hmm. this must be the guy. This must be the guy I'm going to be spending mm-hmm. my time with. So mm-hmm. I shot him an email, and we went and got lunch uh, a couple days before rehearsal started. But we hadn't, we hadn't met prior to that. And then uh, retrospectively, we realized we'd been sitting in the audition waiting room together at one mm-hmm. point. Um, but we, we hadn't talked. We were sitting on other sides of the room. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so that was the first time we met. And now we we uh, spend countless hours together six days a week. Right. I like how you guys are sitting in the audition room, just like stone focused. <laughs> You've been in the room the whole time. You're just like, 
It's like, oh, okay, yeah. I think I think I was in the corner like doing yoga, and I'm sure he was sitting there like, what in the world is going on with this dude? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I respect it though, because I mean, from what I hear and have both seen, this is this is something that I have seen that one dance. Um, oh yeah, the let's. I, you know, as, you know, your experience with that movement call and then the movement that goes into the show itself, because it's, it's uh, like, obviously Harry Potter is going to be something physical, but like the amount of physicality done on the show is insane. Is that like, so take me, uh, take me through the movement call, how it felt for you. And then like, just learning all the different like physicality for the, the show. Yeah, it is. It's a workout of a show, um, no question. Um, and Scorpius isn't in Wand Dance in the show, but as I had auditioned for Albus, some I, I and and that's kind of part of the movement call is there's a little portion of a version of Wand Dance. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it's wild. It's I mean, it's super fun, and I think the movement, Stephen Hoggett's movement, is sort of what levels the show up. I think even to the like, it's it's just that next level of detail and heart um and our our movement captains maintain the the precision of the show with such uh beauty i think um but yeah it is it's like it's definitely a production that asks a lot of asks for a lot of care around the show like uh right. the the warm ups and the stretching and then the recovery and the cool down after the show are the commitment carries you know a lot mm-hmm. more off the stage than many other shows I've done. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, it's certainly very demanding and it's taught me a lot about what, what I can do physically, what my, you know, level for uh, my capacity for stamina is, as well as how flexible something can be. Like I, Scorpius has a couple of moments in the show that are, you know, border on contortion almost, or like um, mm-hmm. some real, there's some real opportunities to create really, visceral or spectacular shapes with with my body and investigating that has been you know sort of a personal and story forward uh, challenge which has been really fun what was your relationship with movement before the show i mean i like to think of myself as like a very in my body person and physical i have a certainly have a background in physical theater as well as playing baseball for most of my childhood but i'm i would not call myself a dancer i can get by if i have to and somebody's willing to help me um <laughs> which is i guess fortunate that scorpius doesn't dance all that much in the show uh but but it is different and it's different when it's three and a half hours eight times a week the sort of physical maintenance that's that's required there right um so you talk you know we've talked a little bit about scorpius and how like scorpius was on your radar and you know and like um you know scorpius not being too much in uh uh one dance but you know scorpius you know having kind of his his own uh journey his own like it, like his real just own i'll say personality because like you think of the last name malfoy you think you probably know who Scorpius Malfoy actually is. Mm, you, you got know, another thing coming. <laughs> yeah, you got a whole other thing coming. I'm looking at you right now. I'm just like, yeah, definitely. Like, I see a Malfoy. I mean, it's not, you know, it's platinum right now, but it's just, I can, I can, I can, yeah, exactly. There you are. You know, the, the apple falls, the very fall from the tree from this, and which makes Scorpius a very interesting character. Albus, too, but, you know, also just like, as far as like, Scorpius goes like can you kind of explain who Scorpius is without giving too much away for maybe someone who hasn't uh seen or read and then uh your you know what drew you to him yeah so we'll certainly there, yeah. yeah two big questions there um yeah if you haven't seen the show and you plan to maybe fast forward a little ways uh because i'm <laughs> I'm certainly a big advocate for like when I go see a show i don't I don't want to know anything I want to go in and right. and totally have some revelations uh but if you have seen the show then or you've read it, maybe you know what I'm talking about when I say like Scorpius really does as as you were sort of saying 
um, defy expectations. Um, so much so to the point that like, he looks like a Malfoy. He's got the hair, he's got the green robes. Um, but when we first meet Scorpius, he's alone on the train and he's anxiously offering Albus and Rose his candy and doing everything he can to try and, mm -hmm. um, earn their friendship in a very like mm -hmm. humble sort of anxiety ridden way which is so the opposite of the like projected confidence that we see from Draco and Lucius in the books. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of because 19 years after the events of the story, like mm -hmm. things have changed in the wizarding world and right. um, it, it, his Scorpius's behavior is so like incongruent with what we come to expect from the Malfoys that when I finally say I'm Scorpius Malfoy, there are nights where people in the audience gasp because mm -hmm. even though he looks like a Malfoy and mm -hmm. that's sort of maybe what you're expecting when you see him, it's mm -hmm. so surprising that, th that this, um, that this mm -hmm. goofball could be a Malfoy. Um, so mm -hmm. he, he really is unlike his father in that way. And then, and then that's sort of a theme that's navigated through the play. You know, what are the ways in which Albus and, Harry are the same and are different and how mm -hmm. how does that shadow impact Albus well and the same is true of Scorpius how is the reputation and the impact of his father his mm -hmm. grandfather play on him and 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 uh, how are they going to come together over the course of the three and a half four years that our play spans um, mm -hmm. and navigate those differences and we we don't see it in the text quite as much with mm -hmm. Scorpius and Draco as we do with Harry and Albus but Aaron, the actor that plays Draco and I, you know, we, that's definitely something we have talked about and we're, we are exploring with the play. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think it is present. Um, and then part of what I guess drew me to Scorpius is precisely that same like sense of humor and care. He is someone who cares so deeply about his friends. I mean, the, just the love he has for Albus is like overwhelming and he he cares so deeply about his school and his studies and he's just a nervous s small child which i mm -hmm. certainly was myself like mm -hmm. a nervous small blonde child who mm -hmm. just um adored his friends and uh, i think it's that sort of big heartedness that albus says to scorpius you're kind and i think that's so true mm -hmm. um for someone who has such a sort of troubled upbringing um mm -hmm. to be so kind and so buoyant and so joyful as scorpius is is like gosh he's such he's such a expectation defying special rich character and i yeah. i feel very lucky to like i've been with the show now for nearly 700 performances and i feel like i'm still peeling back layers and discovering things and that's just the biggest gift you could ask for as an actor i think Right. He, I mean, he is a, you know, a, a big motivation, a big light in the show because, like, you know, he's, he's filtered through a, a bunch of different points, you know, like, you know, his relationship with, you know, his father, the reputation of his family, expectations of his family, but then, you know, the reputation of his family from others, you know, like, you know, namely Harry, who's had a very like contentious relationship with, the Malfoys for a long time, you know, looks upon this boy as just another, you know, just another Malfoy when like he couldn't hurt a fly, yeah. you know, um, and can't really like see that. Then he's filtered through like his relationship with his best friend, Albus, you know, which also was layered too as well. Like he's just like the son of Harry Potter and the son of Draco Malfoy are somehow best friends, you know. Um, Sounds like it would make a good play, right? It was like an awesome play. <laughs> it was just like, I wonder if anyone's written it yet. Um, but it, it uh, you know, it, it's, I, I definitely resonated with, with him, at, you know, as I was reading, you know, from the text when I was just like going through, I was like, no way. So that was like awesome. Also like awesome that you said like, okay, fast forward a little bit because like you won't, you definitely won't see this coming. Yeah. Um, you know, because again, you know, with the with the mouth mouth voice, and I'll even you know, I'll even say like with the layers that are peeled back with Draco in this, and you know, 
nearing the 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 end of you know what comes before it and you know he like his parents you know Narcissa and Lu, you know Lucius it's very it's very an interesting way and I think this is why oftentimes when you like hear people talk about um this particular show um and they say like what was it, a character that you love a character that's like your favorite character you know a character that really stands out to you a lot of people like Scorpius Malfoy because like a his name is Scorpius yeah and then <laughs> the name is Scorpius Malfoy like just like that just spells trouble and then he's giving candy like he's just yeah. <laughs> yeah you know I kind of liken him to and a lot of stories with journeys like this you know and I'm gonna mention like other media other texts right now oh gosh they're gonna come for me but like basically like he like scorpius to albus is similar to me as sam to frodo oh um, yeah you know very yeah, totally very similar. like it's like if it's like if scorpius isn't there like troubles of it <laughs> like, yeah you know because he's also another like another filter like he's also you know like a voice of reason as as well you know with, certainly with, you know as a you know compulsive as all of us can actually be um yeah like are there things now like i know you said like you know you're just like you know this frightened little child you like you resonate right there it's just like are there parts of you that you put in the Scorpius and there are parts of Scorpius that have like rubbed off on you? Oh gosh, certainly. Um, even like I will find myself walking down the street or standing in a sort of in Scorpius's body. And my, you know, my, my, my girlfriend will say like, okay, you're standing like Scorpius right now. You <laughs> And I'm like, Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't need to do that. Um, and really, as you were saying, just as like Scorpius and Albus's relationship is sort of the one of the defining elements of the production, I mm -hmm. think like perhaps the most fun is to find ways to bring my relationship with Joel onto the stage. And you know, mm -hmm. what are the ways we sort of joke with each other in our personal life, and how do we bring that element um, onto stage in our characters? Because you know, I think. Acting is a lot about the the bringing of yourself to the text, bringing of yourself to the stage, and so we do sort of have moments in the show that we didn't necessarily have two years ago when we were strangers and we had just met. Mm -hmm. That now we've been able to sprinkle in, like, oh, we're gonna kind of you know play with each other in this witty way with the text, or we're going to um, you know bring this physical gesture into the show in a way that is unique to my relationship with Joel. And, you know, those, mm -hmm. those moments play differently when there's uh, a cover on because I have different relationships with those actors as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and Scorpius's catchphrase is Wizzo. And now I say Wizzo. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I mean, that's, that is definitely something that's bound to happen. Like it just, your like it, it's 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 actually interesting too because like when i like think about like scorpius and how he is you know i think about because obviously you know you think about draco mafo and how he is and how he's been presented to us like for decades um through text the show you know the films and everything and i and I also think about you know a, a pillar of draco Malfoy, which is tom felton who you know like holds the character very dear but tom felton himself in a lot of ways is very much like scorpius like he's <laughs> very much he's like the nicest guy in the world and he like wait so so like but he but he loves his franchise so much um yeah, yeah. have you read his book the beyond <laughs> the wand I I heard about it and I've heard him like read passages from it, which is enough to make me want to buy it. Yeah, it's a fun uh, it's a fun read. I sort of devoured that uh, in yeah. a, in a couple of days when it came out. <laughs> right? Has he come to the the show recently? Like, has he? Have you got the chance to meet him? No, not not in New York since I've been there. I I don't know if he's seen the show or not. Maybe in London in the first couple years or something. I don't know. Um, it mm -hmm. would be a blast if if he if he wanted to come see the show again. I'd be happy to say hello. But, yeah, absolutely. Just like, hey, let me shine. Um, but going into like that and going into the, I guess the, 
decades in which this particular art has been existed um i am you know just i'm old enough to remember when it was act you know when it was released like hmm, when it was just one book <laughs> like you're just like oh harry potter uh what is what is this and then everyone like in my like elementary school are just devouring this book super quick and next thing you know it's four and it's only four it's like okay it's four in a movie we're gonna do four movies and then they just keep coming they yeah. just keep coming and you know all the way into like there was the you know the announcement of this show which also coincided with like the release of the book which is just the show in text form um which is the best thing they possibly could have done because those things flew off the shelf yeah um i have a copy myself uh um, but <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a couple <laughs> <laughs> just flew it was just like because even though it was a play you might have thought like a brand new like harry potter book like just there's like oh been waiting been waiting been waiting for it mm -hmm. something so huge how does it feel to be a part of something so enormous uh, it is uh it's it's a pinch me thing certainly and it's uh it's easy to kind of get lost inside of it of like oh this is this is the play that i'm doing and and then i walk past the theater and i see the quotes on the outside of the theater that are like the defining pop culture moment of the decade or i think that's one of the one of the ones on the side of the on the side of the theater that hits me sometimes of like oh yeah mm -hmm. this this thing that i am so privileged to be a part of is massive and mm -hmm. and people love it and there are kids at the stage door in robes every night um mm -hmm. because this heartfelt story is so recognizable and so universal and so impactful and it's right. yeah i feel very lucky absolutely absolutely like it's to who whomever have seen like because you know obviously shows you know torches are passed oftentimes and you know like um characters are held by certain people um you know over time but like you know to whomever have gone to see your show um if there's like a kid you know like to see your show for the first time then you were that like you were that character you like you will remain that character that face you know it's do you have you got a chance to sort of like meet some like some of the fans of the show some of your fans you've gotten a chance to like what's that like oh yeah 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 um i mean when when i first joined the show the pandemic was still enough of a enough of a factor that we weren't doing the stage door but a few months into my run uh, they brought the stage door back and now after the show almost every night probably 97 percent of shows um joel and i go out to the stage door and we get to chat with whoever um whoever was at the show that night that felt moved to come chat with us and it's it's always really special to hear um hear the impact that the show has had uh because like theater exists between what's happening on stage and the audience i i think right like right. Um, it's not just what's happening on the stage because mm -hmm. there are you know approximately 1600 people in the audience having their own individual experiences bringing you know i was talking about this with jane bruce who plays delphi after the show last night like mm -hmm. it's not just what we do on the stage it's it's the little things like the barometric pressure and what right. you know an audience has had for dinner that night you know what what's going on in their day what's going on in their life what what's their experience with harry potter because i think the show plays for people who don't know harry potter and for the deepest harry potter fans and i think it it has the potential to be impactful for you uh humorous right. cathartic whether you know harry potter or not and um so getting to hear sort of that half of the equation at the stage door is, is really special. And like, we, we can feel it on stage to a certain extent, right? I'm sure you know, like that flow of energy is right. a constant conversation between mm -hmm. the house and the stage. Um, and then to, you know, get to thank those audiences at the stage door. Um, and or if you know if something different happens on stage that night and maybe maybe it's somebody who's seen the show 
four or five times and they they say, oh, like this moment was different tonight. You know, what was going on there? That's always sort of fun to get to chat about as well. Mm-hmm. Where was I like going with this? Um, so with the show right now, because obviously you're, you're doing eight shows. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're there every day. Um, you're probably performing tonight. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> Later on tonight, which is why I appreciate you coming in and do, doing this. I'd probably be like, oh, my gosh. Oh, so happy to. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, is there anything else out, either outside of art or within art that's outside of, like, Harry Potter? Is there anything that you um, are invested in or any, like, art? You know, I, I know I talked about it a little bit with Joel. It's, it's specifically him tutoring because the the – man is all over the place yeah <laughs> you, you know <laughs> like, he, he's like he's like reading physics textbooks in the dressing room in like, between okay. scenes yeah <laughs> it was like okay i'm like but... what are you doing he's like well i gotta i gotta study up i've got clients i've got i got tutoring clients <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like he's got like a physics book and then like one in the other hand is like <laughs> literally literally <laughs> uh is there is there anything like else in in your life that like that's important to you outside of the world of Harry Potter. I'm sorry, guys, we're leaving Harry Potter for a second. But, <laughs> um, I mean, certainly, like, as much as Harry Potter is everything in my life right now, it is not everything in life. Um, mm-hmm. I don't have any other projects that I'm working on specifically right now, but, I mean, I'm constantly trying to, uh, you know, better myself as, a, as an actor, um, you know, in classes, in my own, you know, self-taping journey. Um, and also I, I am very fortunate to get to, I'm not tutoring physics like Joel is, but I'm Mm -hmm. very fortunate at times to get to lead some acting workshops with, you know, high school groups that are in the city for a week to see shows for a field trip. Or, um, I, I got to, on my last, uh, vacation from the show, I was home in Colorado and I taught a workshop at my high school, which was really special. Oh, that's um, so good. And obviously I said my, my dad is a theater teacher and that sort of world is uh, something that means a lot to me as well. Shout out to all of the teachers out there, all of the educators. The work that you all do is like so incredible and important. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then I watch some baseball when I can. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm about to go pro later on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a movie. Maybe a baseball movie. Maybe Let's a baseball movie. Put that movie. out there. Manifest that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that. I mean that would be perfect. You know enough about it. You understand what it should look like. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah. When was the last time you've been to a game? When was the last time you got to go to a game? Oh, you know, my Rockies were in town to play the Mets a month or two ago, and I was able to get to one of those games. Uh, with nice. my 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 dad uh, came out for the game. He still lives in Colorado. My parents are still in Colorado. But growing mm-hmm. up, we had a tradition of trying to go watch the Rockies play an away game every mm-hmm. summer, and so this was uh, our chance to watch the Rockies play in New York, which was pretty special. Uh, so, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, must have been must have been insane. Honestly, sorry, we're back to baseball, but yeah, you know, like when famously a baseball podcast, so <laughs> I'm sure it's oh, what yeah. your listeners are accustomed to. Uh, absolutely, everyone in the musical theater world is very much in the baseball and other sports. Um, yeah, it's it just it, it gets really insane out here because um, I am, you know, I spent a lot of time in, in San Diego, grew up a lot of time in San Diego as well, as well as obviously like being primarily based in los angeles and you know i can't get anywhere um when the dodgers are playing it's all blue <laughs> it's all blue yeah those it's all blue those pesky dodgers are uh <laughs> always winning oh yeah always winning and i mean and that's pretty much the reason why i you know i think one of the coolest things is you know uh years ago i you know i got to with a with the company I was working for at the time, you know, like the performance company got to be on the field and kind of got to just stand out there and just be like, Oh, that's you know, just, cool. Yeah. I just got to stand out there. Not only, you know, got to kind of direct performance that was out there, but just after we just kind of got to just hang out like on the field. And I think that's something that, you know, the Dodgers kind of 
let people do anyway, just kind of just go out there. And then obviously, you know, I've been to multiples of a Padres game out in San Diego. Um, multiples of it because it's just yeah, this Padre it's, mania. It's, and, it's like theater in its own way, right? Yeah, sport yeah. is is I think it's it's very similar. I think in the ideal in the ideal world, a play feels much like uh, uh, a baseball game or a basketball game where you you don't know how it's going to end, uh, but mm-hmm. you're rooting for you know you're rooting for your team, your character, mm-hmm. your your person, right? Yeah, and it's thrilling. Hey, definitely. We see we brought it right back around to <laughs> to theater guys. Tis all one. Tis all one. <laughs> Zalwin, yes. Uh, Eric and I are writing a musical about baseball, um, and <laughs> it'll be starring him. Uh, just letting you guys know, this is the see, segue. This is what we've been doing. Uh, yeah, if anyone wanted to be a fan of Eric Christopher Peterson, uh, where can they find you? I'm on Instagram sometimes, at eric.c.peterson. Uh, um <laughs> I I am not super active because I have a social a strict social media limit on my phone and I don't know how to override the password. Uh, <laughs> but I'm on there. I'm on there, and you can also certainly find me at the Lyric Theater um, mm-hmm. on Forty Third Street. Nice, nice, nice. And you, like we already reiterated, you're performing tonight. Yes. <laughs> yes. You're performing we got one tonight. tonight, two tomorrow. I'll mm-hmm. be there. Oof. Oof. Okay, well, you heard it here, not first, because many of you probably already have your tickets, but <laughs> <laughs> many of you already have your tickets here. Uh, good luck on uh, your lottery if you're trying to see if you can get in. I, I tried uh, a few months ago when I was in New York. I, I did not get in. But <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be sending you some luck uh, okay. next time, certainly. Definitely next time. Uh, yeah, Eric, this was awesome. Thank you so much for coming and talking to me and I got a busy schedule, so I definitely appreciate oh, my it. My pleasure. It's always fun to chat, um, chat all things baseball, all things theater, <laughs> and the intersection thereof. Mm-hmm. Definitely, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll push this to Joel too. Maybe like before it's uh, before it's over, because I know he's, uh, I know he's taking his bow in November. But like before it's all uh, said and done, maybe I'll, I'll bring you both on and just kind of have just like you know, just kind of complete the the trinity we'll talk about the <laughs> physics of baseball in relation to on stage performance i'm so down i'm gonna write that down <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah for uh everyone else who's been uh listening to us talk about baseball with some theater sprinkled in uh <laughs> this has been another episode of performers wanted and we are out 